Welcome to this lecture series in linear algebra. In this lecture, we'll look at the definition of a vector space and some examples. And let us recall what we have done the last time. So the last time we defined what is a field. Uh, a field was a triple, where f is a set, a non-empty one. Plus is a function of this sort, and multiplication is a function of this sort, with a bunch of properties. There were some five properties which I do not want to get into the details of. You can look at the previous lecture or just do a quick Google to look at all of them. Uh, basically, the notion of a field was uh, mim mimicking some aspects of the rational numbers. And uh, that was our model which motivated the notion of a field. At least for us, that was the motivation of a field. The original motivation might have been something else, historically. All right, uh, some examples of a field are rationals, reals, complex, and finite fields. Let me not say anything about finite fields because this is not what we will be discussing in this lecture series. In some other lecture series, this is going to be a very central character. But yeah, so when we say rational numbers is a field, again, we mean that this triple q plus and dot, where plus is the usual addition, dot is the usual multiplication. This is a field. So whenever we say something like, let f be a field, this just means, or is a shorthand for saying that, let f plus dot be a field. And we suppress this plus and dot. Writing them every time is only going to obscure things. So we get used to such abuse of uh, notations very quickly and this abuse of notation is what helps us keep track of things. All right, so let's move on. Just like we took motivation from rational numbers to define the notion of a field, we will take motivation from R2, the Euclidean plane, to define the notion of a vector space. So in high school, we study the Euclidean plane. And in physics courses, we talk about vectors. And we visualize vectors as, you know, things like these, where you have a line segment and a direction. But mathematically, it's just a point. Any point in R2 is a vector. But if it helps, we may draw these arrows. Now in R2, what we can do is we can add two vectors and we can scale vectors. So suppose I have this vector, I can multiply it by 2 and get a bigger vector, something like that. Multiply it by 3, we will get e something even big bigger and so on. So we can scale vectors and we can add vectors. So when we do add vectors is geometrically, we just slide, you know, suppose we wanted to add it this with, with that. Then we slide this guy to have its tail coincide with the head. And uh, just give me one second. John. Yeah, so we can slide the second vector to have its tail coincide with the head of the previous one and then join this line segment and then this point will be the new vector. Or one could just add the coordinates. You just add the x coordinate of this with the x coordinate of that guy and same for the y coordinate and report that as the new vector. It's the same thing. <clears throat> so we could have added them this way. So we have two operations. We have a scaling operation and an addition operation. The scaling operation takes something, some, some real number and a vector and produces the scaled version. And uh, the addition operation picks two vectors, V and W, let's say, and gives you the sum of them. Again, this addition is, you know, the, the symbol is the same as the symbol we use for addition of real numbers or rationals or complex or anything in, in an abstract field. But this plus is pertaining to elements of R2. So this is just a symbol that happens to coincide with so many other things. That doesn't mean it has, you know, that, that doesn't mean it is asking for any confusion to be caused. All right. Uh, now, with these addition and scaling properties, uh, or rather these, uh, with these uh, addition and scaling in, in hand, there are some properties that they satisfy, a lot of them. But let us write at least one property, or speak, or say in words, that one property. 
for instance, suppose I want to scale the summed vector by 3. So first I sum, I find out the sum and then scale it by 3. Or I could scale them individually. I scale this guy, I scale that guy and then add. We will get the same thing. So scaling and addition, they behave well with respect to each other. And there are a bunch of other properties that one could write down. And let that be the motivation for an abstract vector space. An abstract vector space will mimic these properties, not all of them which I have written down, I have just enunciated one of them. So an abstract vector space is just meant to mimic these properties. Okay, so now we go on to the main definition of this lecture. What is a vector space? A vector space is a quadruple, not a triple, but a quadruple V, F plus and dot where this F is a field and this F stands for a triple in itself. This stands for such a triple and now already a confusion has been caused. This plus and that plus have not to be confused. This plus has to do with the field. This plus is a function from F cross F to F which we discussed while this plus is something else. We use the same symbol that is an abuse of notation but it cannot be helped. If we start using different symbols for this and that, things will get very, very messy and intractable. So just to be mindful that there is a plus that is pertaining to a field and there is a plus that is pertaining to the set V. And similarly for these two dots, these two dots have different roles and different meanings. If it uh, is causing a lot of confusion, then in the beginning one may want to put a tilde above the pluses and the dots of the field but uh, later, I'm sure, in no time, you will get used to this kind of abuse of notation. So a vector space is a quadruple where V is a set. A non-empty set, but let me just say it's a set. V is a set and plus is a function from V cross V to V and dot is a function from F cross V to V. Okay? And F is a field, I should also say F is a field. So just think of this as mimicking the addition that we saw in R2. It picks two vectors and produces a vector and this picks a real number and a vector and gives you a, uh, gives you another vector. So here the real number is replaced by some abstract field and V uh, and R2 is replaced by some, some other set. So vector space is a quadruple where this in itself is a triple, in fact a field, where plus is a function of this sort and dot is a function of this sort. You can call this the addition function and this the scaling function. Let me maybe write that. This is addition and this is scaling. Okay, such that some bunch of properties are satisfied. All right. So we will write those properties and maybe before I write them, uh, let me remark on a piece of language. So when we want to you know, bring into existence a vector space V or, or, a vector, or a quadruple of this sort, we may just say the statement that let V be a vector space over a field F. This is the way we will be writing things. We will not say let this be a vector space. We will say let V be a vector space over a field F it means the same thing as this quadruple. Okay, so whenever we encounter a statement like this, it has to be interpreted correctly. All right, now, now we begin to describe all the properties that we demand from this quadruple before it qualifies indeed as a vector space. So first property is associativity. Associativity says, 
u plus <clears throat> v plus w is equal to <clears throat> u plus v plus w for all u v w. So again, just like in fields, instead of writing instead of writing something like I don't want to dirty this, but uh, instead of writing plus u comma v, we will write u plus v. So we are doing the same thing. And just to be very, very clear, let me expand this out in that ugly notation. Just like we saw in fields. Okay, so this is associativity. Uh, clearly, this is what we saw in R2, or rather, I did not say it, but in R2 we observe this. You have three vectors. Either you add these two and then add the third one, or you add these two and then add the third one. You will get the same thing. So it is mimicking that property. Second is commutativity. So this says u plus v is equal to v plus u. All right. Thirdly, additive identity. So it says that there exists some element zero in the vector space V such that zero plus V is equal to V for all vectors in V. And again, this may be very, very confusing already because there is already a zero sitting here. And now we are saying we are using the same symbol for an element for this. This is also an abuse of notation, but a good one. So this already has a zero as was demanded in its set of axioms, you know, axioms of a field. And here also we are demanding such a thing. So far all these axioms coincide with the axioms of a field. Okay. And just like we saw that this was unique in the case of fields, this is unique even for vector spaces. So I will leave this as, as an exercise, show that. there is only one additive identity. Same proof as in the case of fields. So this thing is called an additive identity or the additive identity once you do this exercise. Okay, additive inverse. So it says that for all vectors, so elements of the of this quadruple will be or rather elements of this set will be called vectors. So for all vectors V in the set capital V, there exists some V prime such that if you add the two, you get the additive identity. Okay. And just like in fields, this is unique. This is called the additive inverse of V and show that the additive inverse is unique. Show that every vector has a unique additive inverse. And the additive inverse is denoted by minus V. So instead of V prime, we will use the symbol minus V. Okay, that is the symbol that we will use. Just be mindful of that. So these four axioms are already just sort of repetition of the field axioms. It looks like that a vector space and a field are almost the same things, but no, they are not, as more axioms are on the way. So now, so far, we have only dealt with the axioms pertaining to this symbol. What about that guy? So now, this is the first place of divergence from the axioms of a field. So this is, I don't know what is the name of this, but uh, let me let me not name it and just write down the axiom. So we insist that one dot V is equal to V for all vectors. So this one is coming from the field and this is coming from the set V, right? So when we, when we have written this, this formally is that thing, 
this dot is a function from f cross v to v and that is what we have you know respected here but instead of writing that we write this all this is saying is that if you scale a vector by one unit you get the same vector back just like in r2 okay this is this is something that we demand axiomatically okay sixth some sort of associativity so it says that alpha dot beta dot v is equal to alpha beta dot v for all vectors and for all field elements so for all alpha beta in the field and for all vectors in the in the set v so again this dot is is the dot here not not the field but not 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 this dot but that dot uh, so you're scaling the vector v by beta and then you're scaling the result by alpha or you first multiply alpha and beta in the field so this product is taken using that dot because anyway you can't use this dot to multiply two elements of the field it just doesn't make sense so you first multiply the, the two things in the field and then you scale the vector v it's the same thing and you can think about what it means in r2 okay seventh one this is distributivity property alpha u plus v equals alpha dot u so here i should write a dot maybe uh, ultimately you know as we go along we will suppress the dots we will not write the dots but as of now let's do it alpha plus u uh, plus sorry alpha dot u plus alpha dot v for all field elements and for all vectors so this is what we enunciated when we were discussing r2 either you add first and then scale or you scale first and then add okay and lastly another sort of divisible uh, distributivity property it says that alpha plus beta dot u is equal to alpha dot u plus beta dot u so here this plus is happening in the field this dot is the vector space dot and again this dot is the vector space dot but this plus is happening in the vector space these are two vectors which you are adding okay so in the in the you know r2 example either you do 1 plus 1 dot u so you're scaling a vector by 2 or you scale the vector by 1 and by 1 and then add it's the same thing and that's what we are capturing via this axiom so these eight axioms are demanded of this quadruple and if they are satisfied we will call the quadruple a vector space alternately we may say that it, uh, the set v or whatever the symbol v is a vector space over the field f which and yes in this in this expression these symbols are suppressed so it is in some sense an imprecise expression but this is what will be used later writing things in this way looks like a computer code rather than something that humans can read okay so that is the definition of a vector space i want to delineate two properties of a vector space before we look at examples so one property is uh, note that if you scale something by zero you get zero and this has to be understood properly this is the zero of the field and you're scaling the vector v by by the zero of the field and this zero is the additive identity of the vector space v the zero of the vector space so these two zeros are different even though they look the same so why is that so here is the proof of it so first of all zero plus zero dot v by our distributivity axiom or the eighth axiom in our yeah the eighth axiom this is zero dot v plus zero dot v but zero plus zero is zero so we have that okay now zero, we want to show that this guy is actually this the additive identity let's call it something so say zero dot v is w so therefore what we have is w is equal to w plus w and now we add the additive identity of w sorry additive inverse of w on both sides 
let me be more pedantic. So we are adding the additive inverse on both sides. So by definition of the additive inverse, the left side is zero and here you could do the associativity business and make that zero. So this is equal to W plus, sorry, W plus zero. But by definition of the additive identity, the right side is W and the left side of course remains zero and therefore W is zero, which is what we wanted to show. This shows that if you scale any vector by zero, you get the additive identity or the zero vector. This is also called the zero vector. Maybe I should write it here zero vector or simply zero that's just a name so i hope we followed this and one more property if you scale something by minus one you get the additive inverse so minus one is an element of the field one is an element of the field, the, the multiplicative identity. Minus one is the additive inverse of one in the field. What this is saying is that if you scale a vector by minus one, you get the additive inverse of the vector. In the R2 setting, it is saying you have a vector V, you scale it by minus one, it becomes just the opposite of it. And now if you add this guy with that guy, you get zero. That's what this statement is saying in this special context. So this is very simple. This is because we have one plus minus one dot V. What is this? This is zero dot V, which is zero as we just proved. And therefore, now you use distributivity or the eighth axiom. You get zero and that's it. This means that one dot V. <coughs> so one dot V is anyway V by, by our insistence that was one of the axioms and that's it. So V plus something gives you zero means that that something is the additive inverse. <laughs> so just keep in mind these two properties and they are natural. They are not some come, something coming out of the blue. All right. So now we can look at examples. So the first example we look at is Rn. When we write Rn, we mean this quadruple. Rn with the field being R and this plus and this dot is something that we will define. So Rn is what, when we write Rn, we mean all the n tuples. That's the definition of Rn. And plus is a function. How is it defined? So it takes two things. First n tuple, the second n tuple and produces this n tuple, just the coordinate wise addition or written differently. This is equal to the right hand side. All right, so that's the definition of plus. And then we have the scaling guy. What does it do? It takes some real number alpha and it scales an n-tuple in the following way. Just coordinate y scaling. Okay. And the exercise is check all the eight axioms. This is indeed a vector space, meaning check the eight axioms. Okay, and pictorially, what is R? When we write R, we can visualize it just as a line with some origin. R2, as we saw, is this guy, some origin. And R3 is something that we can visualize like this. You can do better, I'm sure. Okay. 
another example is cn when we write cn we mean this quadruple cn with the field being c and then addition and dots defined just as in the previous one coordinate wise so plus is a function from cn cross cn to cn which takes <clears throat> a tuple n tuple summed with another n tuple defined to be coordinate wise addition and similarly scaling so here maybe I should have mentioned that when we scale coordinate wise here this multiplication is just the usual multiplication of real numbers alpha is a real number x1 is a real number you can just multiply them like real numbers that's what I meant here similarly here this multiplication is just like the usual multiplication of complex numbers okay and then you can check that yes this indeed is a vector space by checking the eight axioms this was the second example third is rationals we could have done this the first but anyway same thing just repeat coordinate wise addition and coordinate wise multiplication all of these examples can be put in a single umbrella let f be a field then fn comma f comma plus comma dot which we just simply write as fn is a vector space where of course what is the addition the coordinate wise addition and the coordinate wise multiplication so plus is a function from fn cross fn to fn dot is a function from f cross fn to fn same thing I just want to write it again just to emphasize once more this multiplication is happening in the field and this is what we are defining so just instant instantiate is if you substitute r in place of f you get the first example c in place of f you get the second example q in place of f you get the third example so this just takes care of all the examples in one shot but there is at least one more example that i want to discuss let me use a different page so this will use polynomials which we will discuss later properly as of now if you don't know anything about polynomials you can ignore it but just play along so r and x what is r and x we will define so let n be a positive integer and a polynomial of degree n over r is a sum or a formal expression of the form where these are real numbers and an is non zero. Okay. So if you don't know anything about polynomials, ignore it. But this formal expression is a polynomial of degree n if this guy is non zero. And what is R and X? R and X is the set of all polynomials of degree at most n. So this includes the zero polynomial where all these coefficients are zero. Maybe it will not uh, properly confirm to this definition, but basically what is R and X? R and X is all expressions of this sort where A naught up to A n are whatever real numbers you like. Maybe that was a more efficient way to describe it. All right, so that's R and X, and then you add them in a very, very natural way. So then you define this quadruple, or rather, yeah, this quadruple where what is plus? So how do you add two polynomials? So if we have polynomials 
these two this is how you add just add the coefficients and scaling is also very natural just scale the coefficients and you can check that this is a vector space so just check that this quadruple or simply this symbol is a vector space over r Another example, so let x be any non-empty set, and define v as the set of all the maps from x to r. Okay, and define plus from V cross V to V as follows. F plus G, so F is a function from X to R and G is a function from X to R. F plus G is defined again as a function from X to R as it takes an element X and maps to the point-wise addition. So in other words, I could have written this as f plus g, the value it takes at x is the sum of the values that f and g take at x. That's the definition of f plus, f plus g. Similarly, if alpha is some scalar, meaning some real number, then alpha f is a function from x to r. How is it defined? Alpha x consumes some, alpha f consumes some x and produces this guy. So this is a real number, this is a real number, we are just multiplying them here. And this is our definition. So this is how we define plus and dot. And one can check that v as defined above with R as the base field, plus and dot is a vector space. You have to check eight axioms. Okay, so point-wise point -wise addition and multiplication give you a vector space structure on this set. You can just generalize this example immediately to any field. There was no sanctity to the field of real numbers. The same thing you can do for any field. Okay. So lastly, one more thing, call it example 8, consider this quadruple, Cn, R, plus and dot. So we are only changing the field. Plus is again coordinate wise addition and dot is coordinate wise scaling, but you're only using real numbers to scale now. You're not allowed to use complex numbers. And this is also a vector space. Okay, so just verify all the axioms. Similarly, you can show that this is a vector space and this is a vector space. All right.